the 2020 NFL Combine was absolutely lit. There is from anything for the super fast 40s to the record breaking verticals, broad jumps, the brand new drills. All of it was amazing to watch and unfold right before our very eyes. The draft is almost upon us. And it's really that time of the year. Again, before we go to Vegas, before we have that floating stage um, in the fountains and have boats to take draft prospects out to the stage. We're almost there, folks. But it's time to break down the combine. I'm here with Blake and Jalen. And we're going to let you guys know the best standard performances, the big winners and losers from the draft, exciting prospects, and even better, we all take the Wonderleg score or the Wonderlick <laughs> test that all prospects take. And we're going to see which out of one of us who is the smartest and who is clearly the dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> or who just fucking doesn't care. Uh, What's your dumbest. Plan? Uh, <laughs> so we're going to get this thing started off with, like I said, the standout performances from the Combine. And fellas... I, the first guy I want to talk about, it might seem biased because, you know, offensive lineman, offensive lineman. But oh, um, Iowa's Tristan Wirfs. He's a dude who's 6'4", 320 pounds, and this dude flew and was explosive as hell. 4.86 40-yard dash. That is the fastest O-line time this year. 36 and a half inch vertical jump. Best for O-linemen since 2003. And a 10-foot one inch broad jump, and that's tied for first uh, best offensive lineman broad jump since 2003. This was a big boy. He was putting on a damn show. Hey, Ross. Yes. What was your 40 yard dash? Um, are we talking about <laughs> probably in the seven uh, seconds? <laughs> are, are we talking about post weight loss or pre weight loss when I was still playing football? What's your, your fastest you've ever ran your 40? By four. Five four, nice, nice. You know, it's not like, bad. I was not bad. really not bad. bad. I was, I was, yeah. I was a lazy sack of crap. Um, I guess. What about you, Blake? Blake, you got yours? I'm, I'm a soccer guy. Never really ran a forty before. Oh, sorry, just a foot fairy. Oh yeah, Gross. foot fairy. Let's. Yes. You know what, bro? I'm gonna let you slide on that one, just because it's your show. <laughs> I'm not gonna embarrass you in front of your viewers. I'll let you think that you're a. Uh, getting one over on me, but in reality, we know what is the supreme sport in the whole entire world, and that is football. No. no. Rugby. Football. Soccer. Swim. Um, um, you can take that football and shove it right up your candy ass. Another performance that was absolutely just kind of awe-inspiring was the punter from Arizona State. I know Jalen knows about this dude because he's the whole horns up, whatever the hell, stupid devil. <laughs> horns up. Um, the only good thing about Arizona State <laughs> is is um, Coach Herb. He, he's the best. But um, Michael Turk, punter for ASU, didn't have to punt or didn't have to bench press. Most of them didn't. He was really the only punter that did. 25 reps on the bench press. What the hell? He's flexing. flexing. Straight flexing, man. Hey, Ross, over under... Five games. How many games does it take him to get a big hit on somebody? Take a big hit. Um, over under five games. Well, I'm taking the over because honestly, chances just don't line up too much for the punters, especially because half the time, is, most of the time, it's just a fair catch. But this dude has a chance to pull. You know that kind. Of, you remember that Pat McAfee hit on Trenton Holiday on the sideline? Oh yeah, that was that's kind of what I'm imagining, but something a little worse. Pat McAfee's about to get upstaged. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, no offense, Pat. And we'd love to have you on the show, you know. But um, yeah. When you guys saw this, did you guys even see the face of the the um, of the the spotter? Oh that yeah, dude's he, eyes he look wide so open. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you can stop now, <laughs> right? This dude, twenty five reps. So he's putting up tight. Uh, punter was putting up tight end numbers on the bench press. Yeah, I haven't man. seen that before. Probably won't see it for a while. Damn, dude, that's impressive as hell. Um, one of the guys I want to talk about next is someone who I think should have at least been the Heisman finalist, man. Or he should have been a lot closer to win the, the, the Heisman than uh, the voters actually end up having. This was uh, Wisconsin's running back, Jonathan Taylor. This dude put on the show in the 40-yard dash. He ran a 4.39. And to put the 4.39 time into perspective, that's a faster time than Julio Jones, who ran the 4.42. 
OBJ, who ran the 4.43, and DeAndre Hopkins, who ran a 4.57. This guy can fly, and he even showed himself in the other drills that this guy has the opportunity to be a superstar in the NFL. And I think he slept on, and I can't wait to see him prove everyone wrong and make it big time. Definitely. Agreed. He, he, Agreed. he moves. He's quick. Uh, I, I did not expect him to run the 40 that he ran at all, like at all. <laughs> but it, it was Stop great to see. Too. Yeah, no, he, was, he, he's quick. But if we're talking the best 40-yard dash, maybe not the best time, but the best overall-looking, performing 40-yard dash, we have to mention Mackay Becton, offensive lineman, Louisville. This dude is an absolute behemoth of a human being. I don't know what the hell his parents, his family – what were they feeding him to get this dude this big? He's 6'7", sure he 364 pounds. But his 40 time, what were we expecting? Like maybe upper fives, maybe six. Because this dude is massive. No one should be moving that fast. He ran the 5.1. He ran a 5.1 40-yard dash, 6'7", 365 pounds. It ranked a 5.7 on the Richter scale. I don't know if anybody else knew that. But he, he was rumbling. Oh, my. Okay, okay. So, imagine. Linebacker. You're a linebacker. You see uh, the power play, um, offensive, it, the offensive run power. So, the guards go and pull up to a linebacker. You're looking and analyzing the backfield, seeing this all happen. You're the guy in the hole on the, on the strong side. Then you see this guy, Mekhi Becton, all giant of him running up through that hole and steering a hole through your soul with his eyes what yeah. do you do what do you, you do? duck you duck for cover you duck <laughs> you run do you just fall and try just to trip him? aim for his fucking knees fetal <laughs> position and you cry <laughs> oh man that'd be one of the scariest things i've ever well, seen that's like a semi truck running straight for you the moment I want to see this season is whatever team drafts him. You know how Tyreek Hill ran and caught up to uh, uh, Williams and they gave him a high five? I want to see Makai Becton catch back <laughs> up to a receiver or running back and give him a high five. Uh, that that wouldn't be right. That <laughs> It'd be beautiful. I can't imagine, dude. I it's, for me, it's wild to think about the guy that big. I mean, he has, what, almost 45 pounds on the guy that ran the fastest 40 time for an offensive lineman. Um, yeah. There's only 0. .3 seconds between them. That's crazy. No, definitely crazy. <sighs> That's, he's it's, it's he's a freak. That, I can't wait to see him on the field. Yeah, that shouldn't be humanly possible. Of course, after that, though, he got the, the tight quads or hamstrings or whatever, had to take the rest of the combine off pretty much. But that doesn't Did matter when you're drills. that big and you can run that fast. You're going to get drafted, and you're going to get drafted high. So not, congrats yeah, to him. Not bad for the number five ranked overall prospect on a lot of people's boards. That guy's going to be probably the, the first offensive lineman off, off the list. And he should. God bless offensive linemen. You know what I can't wait for? Position. What? I cannot wait to be in Vegas front row. Probably not. I'm not that important. But Are I will you actually going to Vegas? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be there for rounds one, two, and three. So oh. we'll have an insider in there. Don't worry. Oh, when did this happen? Oh, I've, it's been happening. I've had my plane ticket and everything sorted out for the last few months. Like, you've been hiding this from us. He's been hiding this from us. Really? I thought I told you guys. I'm sorry. No. Oh, Dang. We're supposed to be make this a fake thing. Fake. Dang. I didn't even know. I'm sorry, guys. Hey, I well, thought I told are- you. We are going to have an insider there, and we're going to get this footage and in-time analysis that no other podcast, most other podcasts will have. Yeah. Like Absolutely. ESPN be and Sports in there. Center and Blake. And okay, so what that means, of course, <laughs> I know is that Blake is our UFC correspondent. He's going to be the NFL draft correspondent for a whole weekend. Congrats, Blake. Special, you special better assignment. record the uh, Cardinals draft pick for me. <laughs> I got you, dude. I hope you catch I for sure. Uh, I'll, I'll get you the the Broncos and the Cardinals picks. All right, but and when um Beck or um yeah, that's what I was just leading to, dude. I cannot it's, wait to see him get on that boat and that see if sinking. it will. It's yeah, sinking. is it gonna capsize? Like, what's going on? <laughs> what's the over <laughs> under on somebody falling, bro? It's going right? down, and <laughs> as long as you get a good camera shot of that Blake, um, I'll love you forever. 
Oh yeah, I'm gonna try, dude. I I hope I'm not too far back. We're gonna do our best. I'm gonna be there with my brother-in-law. Shout out to uh, Dan. I'm gonna be there with my best friend Will. So and then uh my uh my brother-in-law's uncle. So it'll be a good time. Dude, that's uh, okay. So I was starting the show feeling good. Now I'm just jealous. All right, let's just move on from that. Move on. <laughs> um, so the main takeaways. Let's talk about the winners of this uh of the combine. These guys that either improved the draft stock or kept their draft stock super high and are looking good now going into the draft. First guy I want to talk about is, I think he is the best. He had, he gained the most. He gained the most draft stock out of the quarterback class this, this year, out of at least the quarterbacks that performed. He was the best looking one out of the ones that performed the drills. And this was Oregon's quarterback, Justin Herbert. Um, he looked really polished. The ball came out quickly and accurately. Really good placement on the deep balls. Got that nice arc that you want to see when you're throwing deep like that. And but, um, one of the nice things, the receivers that were out there, they didn't have to work hard to haul in those passes. And I think he is the best performing quarterback out of the ones that actually did the drills. Mm-hmm. I think he oh. did really well. The only yeah. thing that I have to add with him uh, is they were talking about it during his, his drills, specifically when he was uh, throwing the passes to the receivers um he hasn't been under center his whole career so that's going to be a hurdle for him when he first gets drafted he's going to have to learn a completely new type of quarterbacking i'm not saying it's going to be impossible for him i'm just saying that is there is going to be a learning curve and uh they did point out too that it looked like he was aiming a lot when he was yeah. throwing just these yeah, short passes and i don't with the, with the high level guys that's not a good trait to have you cannot be staring your receivers down you cannot look like you're aiming your body positioning is very important when you're a quarterback i mean any little tip that gives the safety a little bit of a inkling of what you're going to do it turns into 6 points in the nfl as opposed to a tip pass maybe in college level so it's it's going to be a big difference and definitely some of the way, the way some of these safeties were running in this draft class you cannot oh, <laughs> you cannot man. take that extra half a we second we got some right? hitters coming out of this draft class it's exciting. Um, next guy I want to talk Jalen, speaking of safeties, yep. I think the biggest winner when it comes to safeties is Southern Illinois safety, Jeremy Chin. He's a big dude um, for his position. 6'3", 220. Not a lot of safeties come in at that size. No, and that's, that's it, a big it, guy. Exactly. You you know more than anyone because you're not really that big, but wow. Okay. Let's let's not get personal. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy had really great performance on the field drills and he has measurables. Big guy he weighed 220 pounds. He still had the best um second best vertical jump at 41 inches. And he that was second only to a guy who got 42 inches. Um he has the second best rod jump at eleven feet six inches, and he clocked in at 4.45 on the 40. So this is a big dude that is explosive and could fly on that field. And this is gay. If, and he look in the drills, he looks like he has a good read on the ball. This is a guy that's going to be making those open field hits that is going to scare the hell out of Roger Goodell and make even more rolls into the <laughs> NFL. Yeah, definitely. And for <laughs> everyone who doesn't know how big I am, I am 4'10", 205. I'm not small. Ross is just a mean You're 4'10". Big. Yeah, we know. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm 4'10". I'm 4'10". You said 4'10", buddy. I said 4'10". I'm 5'10". <laughs> I heard 4'. I did hear 4'10". <laughs> My bad. I'm 5'10". <laughs> you heard it, everyone. We have Blake, who's <laughs> average. We yeah. even have a midget on the show. Then we also yeah. got this guy, who's We're inclusive. We got everyone. He, he, he's, yeah, we cover he's our, all of them. He's not <laughs> only our token because of his race. He's token because of his height. Thank yep. you, Jalen. We're You're diverse. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad yeah, I that's a, something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something to uh, add on the uh, Jeremy Chin safety please. from South, Southern Illinois. I think this just goes to, uh, you know, that that new age kind of build that everyone's looking for within a safety mm-hmm. and a defensive back. Because how are you going to stop the George Kittles? How are you going to stop the Travis Kelseys, the Darren Wallers even now? Got to get my boy in there. Uh <laughs> How are you going to stop them? You got to have some big dudes in the back end that you know can can hit these guys the whole game. Because I mean, it's one thing to hit a guy in the first quarter, right? Your your juices are flowing, you're ready to go, you're pumped up, and you know it, it wears and tears on you throughout. I'm sure you guys can attest to that. Oh yeah. Do you really want to be hitting yes. a guy that's as big as those guys, like Khalil <laughs> Mack size, playing tight end, you know, for the whole yeah. game? This guy, Jeremy Chin, yeah. I think he'll hit them the whole game. He he's a bad man. He's going to fly across that field. 
Um, and he's probably going to be one of those guys, possibly. <laughs> he's probably going to be one of the first safeties safe out the board, for sure. Um, one of the other guys I want to mention that we previously mentioned um, in one of the standout performances, that is the Iowa offensive lineman Tristan Wirfs. Um, he had fairly high expectations coming into the combine, and he not only met them, but I argue that he also exceeded those expectations. His testing was off the charts for a man of his size. 36 and a half inch vertical um, vertical jump, a 10 foot one inch broad jump, and that 4.85 40 yard dash. He even showed off his agility during the field drills, and I think he secured his spot as an early first round draft pick, possibly even top 10. Definitely, definitely a big do move in that fashion. Just like we were talking about earlier, it's it's coming. It's becoming more common, but as of right now, that's still a, a sight to see. So it, it's definitely somebody everybody wants on their team. You know, one thing I was just thinking about, these big dudes that can book it, and with just his brute force, you all know who or what these guys remind me of? What's that? All-time great, arguably the greatest offensive player of all time, Larry Allen. Ooh, yeah. He was the biggest, most physical specimen I've ever seen, and even chased down linebackers that are trying to get pick, six, pick sixes. This guy was fast, and it was scary for a guy like his size um, to move like that. And I think in, in guys like Tristan Wirfs and um, and Mikai um, Mikai Becton, I think we might be seeing. I'm not. I'm not calling them Larry Allen's. I'm not calling them Larry Allen 2.0s. But we can see the similarities between them. I'd argue. Definitely, there's definitely similarities between them. More than just like their overall just archetype. Uh, mm-hmm. That is kind of like the Larry and Allen archetype, uh, the the strength, the speed. No one's saying that anyone's going to be a Larry Allen. It's no one thought Larry Allen would be what Larry Allen was. So Larry it's, Allen is his. Is probably never going to see a Larry Allen again ever. But we <laughs> could see guys get close. Yeah. Um, one thing you guys want to bring up these two really good receivers that are looking at this draft class. The draft class that is loaded. Uh, with wide receivers. Um, both of you guys brought the names of Henry, Henry Ruggs and C.D. Lamb. Uh, would you guys like to explain uh, why you think that they be winners from this combine? Yeah, uh, so first of all, I'm pretty sure everyone saw that viral catch that was floating around the Twitter sphere and, and uh, Instagram and all that with C.D. Lamb during that new drill that they came, that they came up with this year, the, um, the fade oh, route. Fade, yeah. Yep. And I love that drill. Shout out to that drill. Uh, oh, yeah. It's it's one of the most exciting kind of catches um, in drills that you can see in the game. I can't I can't recall who was throwing the ball to CD, but basically the guy threw kind of a, a high arcing pass. CD Lamb does like, I'm not even kidding, an actual 360 in the air, catches it at a 180, and then completes his 360, secures both feet inbounds, one, two, Tony Toe Tap, and then does a somersault. And you know, just just completely kills it. Uh, so I think I th- and then not yeah. to mention he ran a four five one forty uh, two times in a row, which just solidified his you know what everyone thought about his speed. It didn't hurt himself, didn't didn't uh, you know didn't wow anybody with his speed. But really, that's just like good speed for a guy that knows how to get open and has reliable hands. Mm-hmm. Now we turn to Henry Ruggs. Everyone was touting him as the guy that probably has the best chance of matching up with John Ross's 40 time from a, f- from a few years ago, right? A 4.24? I believe it was a 4.22 or a 4.24. 4.22. Yeah. And so everyone was touting this guy as maybe having a shot, right? So he had big expectations coming in. He comes out and he runs an uh, uh, official now 4.27 40-yard dash, which he didn't get the record. He didn't, he didn't you know... Uh, beat John Ross or tie John Ross or anything, but not to not to take anything away from the guy. I mean that he is the fastest human being in this combine. That's just speed is hard to come by, especially that level of speed. You know, look at the Tyree kills around the league now. Look at the guys that can just reach look that second the level. State Chiefs offense. Yeah, <laughs> right. Me, and Michael Fast. Hart and all those guys. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, that is very valuable in today's NFL. I mean, look at how many points are being scored now. The Mahomes in here. In, in the league now, we got Tom Brady going to a new team, see what, where he goes. So we're going to have like a lot of high-powered offenses, and this is a piece that could com- possibly complete a team 
or take them to that next level of just, you know, insane ability to just put points up and, and get yards and chunks. So I thought both of these guys really, it, it's a shame Henry Ruggs didn't go ahead and, and participate in any of the other drills with uh, like catching involved and all that. Cause I would have loved to see that. That's my one question mark with him is can he consistently catch all the passes that you're going to throw his way? Or is he just going to be, you know, kind of that, uh, just a big uh, play, a home run guy. Yeah, just like a home run guy or kind of a gadget type dude. That's so. A, that's a fair question. Um, we got there. I guess the only time will tell once he gets drafted in the first round. I'm looking at training camp and all that fun stuff, right? Right, definitely. So let's talk some losers, though. Um, I think my biggest loser, or at least one of them, is a quarterback that a lot of people were hot on, and I I still think that he is going to be a good pro quarterback. Joe Burrow. I'm not. I'm not. His small hands. Yeah, no, Joey Bro, the biggest loser by having nine inch hands. Yeah, I think he drops. I think he drops his second round because of that. No, I'm really going fifth round. Fifth round. fifth round. fifth round. What about Mr. Irrelevant? You guys better be yeah. careful. Some some people aren't going to be able to detect sarcasm. We gotta we gotta have some type of <laughs> code word when we're when we're being sarcastic. Some people might actually give us. Here, a here's the code word. We're just joking. <laughs> but um, what the guy well, I want to say about... anything that ESPN would say, then then you... most likely we're joking. I, <laughs> I have I have one th- one thing, bro. How would you feel if you just wake up one day, you know, go to your regular old job doing your thing? Next thing you know, you get on Twitter, everyone's talking about your hand size. <laughs> Man, that'd be a rough day. Like this guy only has nine nine inch and three quarters. Hey, shout out to Joey size. Burrow to handling it like a champ though, and saying and joking about it and saying he'll retire because of it. Yeah, That's, definitely. No, love the guy from it. But what I was Soft. saying is that I th- <laughs> oh he's letting it get um, to his head already. I think <laughs> I think one of the biggest losers from this draft. I'm still I still think he's going to be a solid quarterback in the NFL. But Jake Fromm, he might have looked the one of the worst out of the quarterbacks that performed. I think the two worst ones um, out of, out of the, the performances during the combine was Jake Fromm and um, Love um, out of Utah State, but. Jake Fromm, average measurements and height and hand size, but that was that's what we we're expecting. But what I really saw bad from him was his struggle by thro- um, throwing the deep ball. His, the ball fluttered and was inaccurate when he really tried to force the ball downfield. We know he, um, his arm, he has decent range, but when he tries to go further than the range he actually has, it's a bad ball, and that's a ball that's going to get picked off in the NFL. And it looks really bad when he's trying to force it, um, and that's something that some people might have to be worried by. Um, he didn't look bad, but on Thursday he got outperformed by most of the other quarterbacks. And I, uh, I don't think he's bad, but he just didn't do as good as I think people were expecting him to. Definitely, and I think it comes down to the fact that that's why they kind of tell you to be yourself when you go to the combine. Don't try to be somebody else or try to act like other players. And I feel like that's what Jake Fromm did was he tried to do too much he didn't just show what he can do he was trying to trying to just go out there and do what he can't do and so that's not what you're trying to do you're trying to show teams what you're good at uh and obviously you're gonna have time to work on it when you get drafted but going out there and kind of just not not literally but throwing the (laughs) throwing your draft stock away trying to do too much that's yep that's exactly what it is um a second loser, if we're talking about cornerbacks, uh, Mississippi State's Cameron Dantzler. Um The problem with this is that he doesn't. This performance in the combine doesn't necessarily make him look bad. It's because these drills don't really fit him. This is a guy that plays with a high level of physicality. So having these drills on air and just other like speed and agility stuff, that doesn't help show who the player that he is. The scouts like his size, um, but what? did um hurt him was a slow put slow in quotes because of course is still very fast but a slow 40 yard dash at only 4.64 um he had a decent showing by catching most of the passes during his drills but the thing is um it, he might have dropped out of the top 50 with this performance yeah, yeah I, no. I wouldn't be surprised by that because a 4.64 for a top corner that's just there's no way i mean you you'd have to be getting a pick six like every single other play for that to be justified. I mean, no one's going to look at a four six four and be able to justify that within a top fifty pick. 
There's going to be too much other, too many other talented individuals available. I don't care how good the guy's tape is. Yeah, but one thing I do want to point out from uh, what Coach Bruce Arian said is a guy could come to the uh, forty yard dash to the combine and run a four two, but when he look when you look at his film, he runs a four six. So I do think film does come into play. Obviously, the combine is a big thing for teams and getting that last look at you before they draft you. Mm-hmm. But I, um, I definitely think that that is something that you can go by is film is not going to lie because you you have hundreds and hundreds of plays to look at. Of He did this here and he can catch this guy and this guy ran this. So it, it, it's definitely something that you can look at. I yep. guess the only thing I have, to, I have to add to that is I don't take liabilities with the top 50 pick. And a 4 6 4, I, w- I do agree with you. You'd have to look at that tape and see is he as slow as he ran? Because a 4 6 4 is beatable in the NFL. I mean, by a lot. So the top tier guys are going to be able to fly past a guy that runs a 4 6 4 if he runs that slow in a game. Definitely. Yeah, yeah that is a good point right there, Blake. Um, one of my final losers. Um, one, of the, one of the last ones I want to talk about is Tony Jones, the running back from Notre Dame. This is another guy that kind of came in Cameron Dancer's position. He's a power back, and you can't really show power against air. Um, he looks slow um, compared to the other backs, even the other power backs. Um, he has slow 40 at only a 4.68, and he lacked explosiveness with only a 32.5-inch vertical and a 9-foot, 11-inch broad jump. He didn't look really as fluid or quick as other of uh, the other um, running backs, and that's going to hurt him. I still think it is, he's not a quick back. He still looked decent um, coming out of the backfield, looking as a um, as a receiver catching those balls. But this does hurt him. I don't think it really should hurt him as much because you still have to look at all the film. And this guy that can run people over, but the combine just isn't good for guys like this, you know. Yeah, I definitely think there should be more of a, um, you know, style-based uh, drilling uh, because it kind of makes – I mean, unless teams just go out there and just outright know, this guy's a power back, I'm not really expecting too much mm-hmm. out of him in the combine. I mean, that's that's what the fill comes in for. That's why, that's, that's that's why you have the, the senior film. Film. Because it's or like the senior guy, goal as well. Yeah, it's like if a guy runs a 4-7, but he can guarantee that he's going to break three tackles or run, you kind of don't really pay attention to that 4-7 anymore. Right. <laughs> Big difference, yeah, and that's exactly know, what I was yeah. going to say. I mean, we all it, know Jerome Bias wasn't the fastest man in the world, but that dude know, ran people over. Bus. <laughs> the, yeah, but the thing that that does alarm me is if a guy cannot make somebody miss, whether it be running them over, whether it be making a miss with elusiveness. There's got to be a trait besides you know straight line speed is fine, right? The faster you run, the better. Um, but you gotta have that, that wiggle. You gotta have that, you know, power. You gotta have something that, I mean, take, take Josh Jacobs, for example, last year, I can't remember the exact time he ran, but I think it was four, six or above. Mm -hmm. Um, and dude's a beast. I mean, I have no complaints. Do you guys have any complaints? I thought he made a couple, like not a couple, but, uh, uh, several very, very amazing plays last year. So your 40 time for a running back, I don't think it's necessarily the most important thing. But you do want to see some athleticism. You want to see some agility. You want to see some elusiveness. Something that's gonna, you know, translate to on the field making guy, you know, getting extra yards. Because you, what you hate is a Latavius Murray. Sorry, my guy, that just falls at the line of scrimmage, or even worse, a Bo Scarborough. You know, he just literally gets hit with an arm tackle and just falls to the ground. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't have that at the running back position, man. It's just awful. You got to have those guys that when they get hit, the Marshawn Lynches, man. The guys that when they get hit, they just they just started getting going. They mm-hmm. bounce. <laughs> yeah, um, especially in the NFL, you can't um, you have to be able to make people miss because the tacklers in the NFL are of course top in the world, and those are the hardest ones to stop. Yeah, I think um, you guys want to talk about Jerry Judy possibly being a loser oh, out yeah. of this combine. I'm uh, that's kind of a hot. One. That might be a little bit of a bold take. So let me hear it. It was. It's more not. I wouldn't say he was exactly a loser, but I would say if I had to choose between winners and losers of the uh, combine, I would definitely put him in the loser bracket just because based off of, I mean, just like what we were talking about with running backs, based off of his play style, uh, it is really his combine really didn't affect based off of film where I think he's going to go. But when you put him next to guys like CeeDee Lamb and Ruggs who went 
Like uh, CD Lamb showed craziness catching and, mm-hmm. and was amazing. He had his highlight. Rugs speed just kind of like Jake Fromm, how he looks good, but just compared to everyone else, yeah, he looked behind. It's just, it's just like he looked behind, but it's like when you look at film, it's like okay, but I see where that the, all the stats that he showed in the combine mm-hmm. are perfectly fine where they're at. Like there's nothing wrong with it, and I don't think he's not gonna be a good receiver in the NFL. I'm not saying that he's gonna drop out of the first round either. I'm just saying that when it's coming to team selecting who they're gonna pick here, if they're going off of the combine, Rugs and CeeDee Lamb look like way better options right now, just based off of the combine. So if we're going winners and losers of the combine, I would say that his draft stock definitely probably took a drop. But by drop, I mean like probably like two or three picks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Most. I don't I don't see him like dropping 10, 15 picks. You know, what's the, stupid is that I didn't think it was a big deal. Him explaining why he wears the, the star of David because people call him Jew for short. There mm-hmm. is some people actually, actually talking about how that should affect his draft stock. That has no correlation. And I don't get how people make these claims like that. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the whole. Um, we found this tweet from ten years ago. Oh, that he that's did. the worst, bro. Just wait till draft night. We're going to see this guy first. Uh, Joey bro, or he's going to be first overall pick, and some um, douche over the internet is going to go back twenty years or ten years to find when he was a teenager saying stupid stuff. Actually, there already and, are things going around saying that old tweets of Joe Burrow are of uh, might affect his draft stock. Oh. So I, I don't I don't pay too much attention to it. It's kind of just stupid at this point. Uh, I think like obviously if a guy's out there and he like has all the pictures of him dressed up in like a KK uniform. <laughs> well, or, that's a little different. That's different. But like if he was literally just like obviously joking, Saying wasn't blatantly yeah disrespectful or racist. Like sometimes it's a reach. And, and like uh, most times it's a reach. Most times it's a reach. Almost every time it's a reach. And if it's, and if if it's also, not a if reach, you're one of these people that goes out and lo- literally spend your time scrolling through all these tweets trying to find something negative on someone just to make a news story and get some clicks for your stupid ass blog, you're pathetic, and yeah. you should reconsider your life, and maybe get one. Or just stop being a piece of crap that nobody likes. I don't mean to interrupt your rant, but I don't think any of those dudes are listening to this. Hey, <laughs> we're on the same team now. here, man. Like, I don't care. Um, I thought I we just, were talking just, about Jerry Judy, man. I, I was, did, but I was it, talking just, about Jerry Judy. Well, I just had to let my my inner hatred for these guys flow off for a second, if you don't mind. Yeah. Go Hopefully ahead. Hopefully, they're take on I'll, Jerry I'll, Judy. I'll, 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 I'll clip this thing, girl. and I'll at them <laughs> and just to call them out because I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish, but Jerry but, uh, had the best combine performance of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bring us back now. Okay, so Please, Jerry, 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 uh, to go off of what Jalen was talking about, I I do agree. I do think that uh, if anything, his combine performance didn't necessarily help his draft stock. Uh, I don't think he was a loser. However, I think. Uh, I think he just he did pretty he be like with the other guys he performed pretty much where everyone thought he would perform. He ran a you know a pretty medium what four five five four six four range I think forty which I would say is like you know it's average for a receiver it's pretty good but his game is just kind of similar to a uh, to another receiver that came out of Alabama Amari Cooper where he is just a phenomenal route runner. The guy knows how to get open. He can work in short spaces. He can, you know, just make people look foolish without even having the ball in his hand. Um, so I think that, like like we were talking about earlier, the tape is going to have a lot to deal with with uh, with where he gets taken because Rugs running that four two seven. I agree with you, Jalen. That puts him up people's draft boards, especially depending on what team is picking where. Um, because like I said earlier, CD lamb, I believe is number one receiver getting off the board. I don't yeah. think there's any way that any of those guys are going to be taken before him. There's just no way. Uh, then it's just based on preference, really. Like, do you want kind of an all around receiver, uh, who might be a little bit more polished at the start of his career? Do you want a speedster, a guy that is just can just completely take the top off of a defense and just has the afterburners, right? So you make your great point that in, in this point, there's not a lot of wide receiver ones, twos, threes, fours. There's a lot of wide receivers one, one A, one, one B, one C, yeah, one much. D. There's all these guys that are the top deep draft. tier. The, they are. It is. There's a lot of these guys that are top tier wide receivers, 
And so it's not going to come down to who is the best better receiver. It's going to come down to they're all great. Who's the one guy that can fit our our niche right. offense? Who's the good fit? That much and more. I would and say I this year, think, if you're if you're a, if your team needs a wide receiver this year and they draft a wide receiver, this is a phenomenal time for you. I oh, mean, yeah. I would be so excited. I'd be watching every it's single easy highlight reel out right there now. once I you know once I see right. who I got. Yeah, anyway, what were you going to say, Jalen? I'm sorry. I, I think it's going to come down to the – I think Ruggs is going to go before Judy, but just because of the Tyreek Hill effect. I think every single team saw what Tyreek Hill did for the Chiefs uh, the last couple of years and in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl. When you have a guy who could pretty much just run past everybody, it kind of opens up your offense because then all your slower or just bigger receivers kind of get their one-on-one situations because you kind of have to have two people watching them because if he breaks away – you don't know if you're going to be able to catch him. So it's kind of <laughs> like agree. you get more one-on-one situations with your big receivers. So like, let's say he was to go to, let's say Ruggs goes to somebody like Green Bay. If he's running down the middle of that field and he takes the safety and now you have Devontae Adams sitting over there by himself on a one-on-one, you're throwing that ball. So it's not even technically stats-wise what he's going to get. It's kind of just that on-field presence that they bring. That's great. Um, Dude. Henry yes. Ruggs to Green Bay. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> that would be so awesome. I don't want to see that because um, I want to see Henry Ruggs go to the Broncos. Oh, Even that man. situation. Don't ruin Henry my, Ruggs don't and ruin my dreams. I'll ruin all your dreams. That's disgusting. <laughs> You're a Raider fan. You don't deserve dreams. Oh, okay. Hey. Oh, Vegas, baby. <laughs> Vegas gang. <laughs> Honestly, I'm looking really looking forward to seeing games in Vegas. That's going to be. Exciting. Um, if we want to talk about my personally, um, I think the biggest loser out of this draft is not because he had a bad showing in, in the drills or in, in the um, measurables or because he was supposed to be a high draft pick. Now it looks like he's dropped. I want to talk about Taron Johnson and how he looked <laughs> left when he needed to look right. And he got smacked right yep. in the dome with the football. All too common. Poor All guy. too common nowadays. Poor guy. He just got domed, and then you're going to have to keep running, but you know you're kind of off, and then yeah, now we don't know if you can catch or if you're just dizzy. <laughs> oh, he got a concussion early onset of CTE. <laughs> Who knows? Took his first big hit of yeah. the NFL already. Oh, that, yeah, first hate of many. Yeah, hate to see that one. Unless hate you're us, see. and then or unless you're me, and is just an asshole, and you yeah. love to see it. Because it's funny as hell. <laughs> All right, My guys. My thoughts go out to Johnson. <laughs> I have I'm... one question for both of you guys. Mm-hmm. What prospect for your guys' NFL teams are you most excited about maybe dropping to your team in the draft? I think Le- I just Ladies first, this. Ross. Okay, okay. That's low blow to do that <laughs> while Mari talking. That doesn't <laughs> 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 But as I already mentioned, I really think that – so the Broncos are number 15 spot in the draft. I think – Ruggs really does have a chance of dropping to that mid first round area. And if the Broncos could get a speedy receiver like Ruggs, so we have, you already have um, um, Corlin Sutton, a big guy that's going to be making physical plays. You have Deshaun Hamilton, he's a good guy underneath. Then if you get a guy like Henry Ruggs that can take the roof off of defense and open everything else up for you, that's going to be perfect, especially for a young quarterback like Drew Locke. I was and just going to say, the only thing we'll need after that is a quarterback. Um, they already have a quarterback, Blake. Um, Who? Derek Carr. Um, <laughs> you were one to ask about quarterbacks. Derek Carr, what the hell has Let's Derek Let's not make this Carr personal, done? guys. It's always personal. Yeah, continue, <laughs> with your, <laughs> continue with your analysis. You. Okay. No, my analysis is done. You talk now, Blake. Go ahead, Blake. <laughs> awesome. Peace Thank you. Crap. Let me roll out the red carpet. Uh, <laughs> so, if I, so if everything went my way, and, you know, I won the lottery and all these pigs were flying in the air. I would I would be able to have Isaiah Simmons on the Raiders. Mm. <laughs> it's a lot this of guy, there. man, he checks he checks off every box. I mean, he he played every position. It seems like on the defensive side of the ball, whether it be safety, linebacker, corner, even I, I saw him play some some slot in, in college. I mean, that's just absolutely ridiculous. He can play D line. All those things that he they had him playing everything in college. Um, he would be the dream pick for the Raiders because our defensive side of the ball is atrocious. We have no, we have we have no star players really. I mean, we have some interesting, we have intriguing options in like a young Max Crosby who's like good pieces, right? 
We have an yeah. unproven Jonathan Abram who is a hitter, but we haven't seen him perform in the NFL yet for more than two quarters. Um, so it, it, I think that if we got a guy that was at, uh, excuse me, Isaiah Simmons level, mm-hmm. that would just add a, an element to our team that we haven't had probably since Khalil Mack. You know, Khalil Mack was that that do it all guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Isaiah Simmons, if we could get a guy that could come in, play linebacker, play whatever we needed him to do, just mainly cover Kelsey and uh, and guys like Kittle, you know, mm-hmm. that would be just a blessing. I would, I would be so happy. So Adrian, I think uh, who, the realistic yeah. way to get him though would be a trade up. Obviously, there's no way you don't think Isaiah falls? Simmons falls. No, I think the the furthest he would fall is to I think um, maybe the Cardinals pick, maybe. Yeah. And then so if you guys wanted you, to help, do you think the brother we might out, be having a, a Cardinals Raiders trade? You guys uh, want to help ooh. brother out? You know, I think, I think if we Car- talk about this, so who are you most excited to see the Cardinals pick up? Uh, actually, with them the being combine, in the eight spot. Yeah, the combine actually kind of made me a little bit sad because I was originally hoping that the Cardinals would be able to be able to drop back a couple of picks, you know, give a couple of people their chance to grab a couple of the DBs and offensive linemen and let us grab CD Lamb. But right now, after that combine that CD Lamb had, we might have to just stay at eight and grab there. He's a top 10. Yeah, Yeah, I think. It, it, it was definitely I, w- I was hoping that he would have a good draft, but I was hoping he wouldn't mm-hmm. show too much so that we could still just drop back. But it's like, well, let's say we drop back four picks and, and somebody trades up right in front of us or something like that. And I don't think we can risk not getting CD, especially with that connection he already has with Kyler from day one. That'll be amazing. So um, you really want the Cardinals to go all in for CD Lamb? I really want them to get CD. I feel like we can fix our rest of our problems was pretty much off of the line, which we could mm-hmm. fix in free agency. We have the money to do it. And there's going to be a couple of guys in the second and third round we could also pick up. Defense, I feel like we could also fix in the second and third rounds. So I'm definitely not too worried about a lot of the other positions, but I feel like when there's a guy like CD on the board mm-hmm. who already has a connection with your quarterback and doesn't have to already build one, I feel like you got to have to take him. I if, think that'd be a great pick if the Cardinals could get him, but if not, Tristan Wirfs, a guy that we mentioned a couple times in the show. Definitely. I honestly, uh, maybe just because my biased perspective, I'd rather see the Cardinals get an offensive line around Kyler Murray before they go into receivers. Of course, Definitely. those are two big things that they need to handle, but I think O line's more important. You um, can also like, invest in O line through free agency, though, too. Don't forget about that. So there's there's, a lot there's, of there's plenty of avenues they can exhaust. Know, there's still that's why I love about the draft because there's so much stuff that goes down either before draft night, on draft night, or after night after draft night, and it's so exciting. It, it's, it's almost exciting. It's all about exactly philosophies season. too. You know, like I, there's so many different, different things you could do. I think we're gonna have two, maybe three first round draft picks traded this year. Ooh. That's that's a hot take right there. I'll take that. Two okay, so three. wait, the over or the under of two and a half. Let's say, let's two say, I, yeah, I'd say, I'd say, I'd take the over on, on two and a half. Because I, okay. I said, I think a top fifteen pick is going, and then I think uh, somewhere in the twenties is going. Well, it's going to happen once the uh, once the Bengals trade away the number one draft spot. Oh yeah. Ooh, I said it. I'm probably yep. wrong, but I said it, and I just want to put it out there. <laughs> um, I'm trading. No. One of the things I want to talk about, I'm going from the biggest winners and losers, a little more fun. Of course, we all, um, one of the things that every um, um, draft prospect does in the combine, even if they're not performing on the field and stuff like that, they all take what is called the Wonderlick test. This was a test (laughs) invented in the 1900s by a man with the name of Wonderlick. It's pretty much an IQ test. In every single prospect, takes this test and so we thought hey in the spirit of the combine how about we all take this test as well and you want fellas just to embarrass this guy we're going to start from lowest score to highest score (laughs) so save save the worst for the first start us off with what was your score i got a solid 17 out of 50 and we'll keep in mind (laughs) the average is around 25 for nfl players so 17. So I'm Blake, not an NFL no, player. No, obviously not. <laughs> not even mentally. Not. But if we're being at least nice to you, um, we went we took these scores and we compared these scores to other um, current athletes and what they got. Blake, the person that we can compare you to based on your Wonderlick score, Khalil Mack. How does that make you feel? Makes total sense. <laughs> Makes total 
We're both specimen. So I both mean, specimen. <laughs> I think it two for two different <laughs> reasons. <laughs> into the spectrum. Man, I had a rough day at the office. I came home, dude. They had all these questions saying eight thousand six hundred and thirty eight spilled backwards is blah blah blah. I was like, whoa. I've been, been out of college you, for three years. I saw these I saw these questions. I was like, dude, prepare yourself, man. Hey, I'm like, exit this out of this test, real quick. This I, I exit smart. out of I, this, and then I come back. It's the same exact question. So I was like, no, this I got to sit down and walk in. All of you guys should go out and take this test because this is a lot of fun, but it's also really challenging. If It's 50 questions in 12 minutes. That's a yeah. question about if every don't 15 have 12 seconds. minutes. There is also uh, three, uh, the short three-minute one that gives you pretty much a rounded up if, if you finish the whole test. See, all, so all of also. you guys, all of your listeners, do us a favor. Take this test. Then go over to our Twitter. We'll put out the um, we should be put on a tweet, or you can come on the YouTube video if you're watching. Um, tell us your score, and we'll give you guys a comparison. Um, we'll give you your NFL player comparison, and we just want to see what you guys get. See if we. I know it's going to be higher than Blake's because we have a very smart and educated fan base. Unless if <laughs> I want to call names, um, big time listener, thank you for your support, Logan. But I'm not expecting anything big out of you if you take this one. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to say I, that I took the test with, I don't think I approached it the right way because for me, when I see a question, I like to answer it completely. Mm-hmm. I like to be like, okay, I know I got that one right. You can't with do that. this one, with the wonder lick, I feel like I should have just been like, oh, don't know that one. Whatever. C. Yep. Oh, don't know that yep. one. Whatever. A, you know, like to instead honest, of just though, looking I, at that for so long. I was so going the questions when I first started and there was kind of questions and it was like big numbers with like four uh, responses. But I noticed that like a lot of the questions, the big number ones, you can pretty much eliminate two or three answers right off the, uh, right. There off the is team. a strategy to doing the wonder lick. Yeah. It, it's, um, it's really, it's overcomplicated questions with easy answers. The unscrambling so, like, of the words was ridiculous. Those are hard. Though, okay. Those are hard. Like, the funny part is I got all of those right. Oh, well, I got, congrats, I got well, if you got all the of them right, right too, but I just think that. it's stupid. Like, what does that, so, what does that prove? No, I got all well, of the, uh, the word one okay. right. So Jalen, um, your score though, buddy, yeah. a solid 33 on that. Yeah. And so the player that we compared you to, or at least you compared yourself to, uh, um, arguably the greatest player of all time, Tom Brady scored a 33, but wow. Jalen, do you want to cheat it? I don't think, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I don't think Jalen compares more to Tom Brady. I believe he compares to another NFL player who also scored a 33 on his Warren Lick test. Uh, like Jalen, okay. your player we don't that do I will person- personally compare you to is none other than the living legend, Nathan Peterman. The disrespect. <laughs> The, the, I think that total, fits a little better. Oh, uh, Nathan Peterman, <laughs> Jalen, you're Nathan I, Peterman. I feel like, buddy. I feel How's like it I, make you feel? I feel like my test gave me the two extremes. I'm either going to be one of the best players of all time or of the worst player. Or you're going through a four picks in one half. Yeah, yeah Nathan so. Peterman is a respected backup in this league still. Who's in the XFL? I, okay, I'll call him a backup. <laughs> I will never put the term respected in front of that. Not but, at all. Respected you know, backup those by John Gruden. Two. The last guy. Of course, I haven't said my answer yet because I had the highest score out of the three of us. I placed, I won't brag, I placed in the 96th percentile. Um, he also had a second window open with all the answers. You're, nope, yes, no, I did. didn't. I'll take he took the five. test like he 25. missed five on purpose. He missed, Boy, I took he missed 15 once. on purpose. Okay, to be honest, this isn't the first time I'm taking the Wonder Like I took the Wonder like one time before comes out. back. Um, because for our draft in my fantasy league, in order to determine draft position, we all took the wonder like and compared, um, and took the higher scores, got the higher picks, but this was all the way back in August. I took the wonder lick, no PEDs necessary because I am natural, um, all natural because mm. I only need what I got. I got a 35 on this. That is one of the higher scores, 96 percentile. And the guy that I was compared to. With the same score, none other than one of the greatest talents the NFL has ever seen, Aaron Rodgers. And I'll take that. I will 100% take that. What score did Jamarcus Russell get on the Wonder Lick? Uh, Jamarcus Russell. No way he got higher than 17. I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> one of the guys I want to talk about, um, if we're going to go with this, um, while Jan looks up um, his score specifically, a couple of guys I want to mention. The Wonder Lick is not always – it obviously doesn't correlate to on-field um, play all the time because a guy like Frank Gore, Hall of Famer, six. Vince Young. Smoked him. A Hall of Famer. 
six. Smoked him. Uh, Trell Pryor, seven. Bobby Wagner, eight. I'm feeling so, good. Uh, but if we want to, if there has been, so the score is out 50. And the there in history, there's been one player to ever test a 50. And that was punter slash wide receiver from the 60s, I believe. Pat McKinley. Um, guy out of Harvard. So obviously he of knew course. what he was doing. Current guy with the highest score, Ryan Fitzpatrick, better known as Fitz Magic, has a score of 48 on the Wonder League test. Or Patriots um, tight end, Benjamin Watson, also has a 48. Um, another wow. guy, Blaine Gabbert, 42. Bring a couple of these other guys. Um, Eli Manning, Hall of Famer Eli Manning, 39. Okay, See, guys, I, I found Jamarcus Russell's score. You guys ready for this? Is it? it, it, it I'm oh, getting, I can't wait. Yeah. What is it? Wait, what's your guess? Before Jalen says, I'm I guessing would say eight. a solid four. Four. I'm going with eight. Jalen, tell <laughs> us the news, please. All right. So Jamarcus Russell did beat out Blake no. on this. Jamarcus Russell got a 24 out of 50. I want to read it. <laughs> well, if we can all determine one thing then. That just because you have a somewhat decent score on the Wonderlick does not mean that you will know how to put in a VCR and watch an empty tape for film. Yeah. It's true. But unless, guys, unless you're Blake. Yeah. <laughs> unless you're Blake. That was a combine. I really cannot wait for this draft. I'm even more excited um, after the combine than I was before for this um, NFL draft. It's going to be one hell of a time. We're going to have a guy there. For it as well. Great news, big time news coming out of the fourth and long podcast. Thank you all for listening to our combine breakdown. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at fourth long radio, Instagram at fourth and long radio, um, YouTube, Spotify. Get the whole nine yards because we're making big things happen and we are so happy to have you guys along the ride with us. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me here today, breaking all this stuff down. Jalen, good job on your 33. Blake, um, damn, dude, come on. Yeah, yeah. Bad representation. We're going to retake this one more time before the draft. I ain't worried about it, man. I mean, it does, <laughs> the score doesn't make the man, you know what I mean? Look at Khalil Mack, 17, and he's still living the dream. Hey, Jamarcus yep. also got a higher score, though, so you never know. <laughs> hey, Jawalris is in this, you know, I'm probably Jawal- making more money annually than he is right now, so I'll be okay with that. Hey, McDonald's has a great work plan, okay? You take that back. <laughs> okay you guys are just too much we'll catch you guys um in the weekly podcast episode 26 will be out soon thank you all